welcome to this week's episode of Land Rovers Live. As always, I'm Matt, and coming up on today's show, we learn about the Defender Challenge. As well as that, we introduce the newest member of the Land Rovers Live Owners Club. But first, the news. If you're watching this bit, it means you're watching online, where we will always put extra bits and pieces of show that we can't fit into the television time. We have 22 minutes on television, and we can't overrun that. Also, we could talk about other stuff that maybe we wouldn't on TV. But it's been a bit of a quiet couple of months for news, not that much been happening, but this weekend kicks off the show season. And it does it in style with three separate events. First off is the Muddy Good Weekender, which is exactly what it says on the tin, and there'll be plenty of you going along there. We won't be there, so we'd love to hear from you and see some snaps, videos, and bits and pieces along the way. Next year we may go to that one. Next up, there's the Newbury Auto Jumble, which is exactly as it sounds, an auto jumble for all sorts of Land Rover parts. Again, we won't be at that one, but we're sending somebody down to do some filming and see what happens there. Good place to go if you're on the hunt for secondhand parts or you're doing a rebuild and need some bits and pieces along the way. So do check that one out. We'll put some links on the screen for it. And finally, back at Donington, we have the Great British Land Rover Show, brought to you in association with The Landy Magazine and Bearmack. As many of you know, Bearmack are a show partner here on Land Rovers Live, so we'll be going down to that show to bring you all the news and, well, whatever else we find there. Interestingly, Bearmack will have a whole load of their brand new Wild Bear kit there. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that, but nevertheless, it'll be there and it's really good stuff. Do check it out, particularly if you're into the very high end of equipment. Lastly, it's been 45 years since the Range Rover was conceived and Land Rover are starting to shout about that. Recently, they've announced that they are providing vehicles from Land Rover Special Vehicle Operations to go into some Land Rover experience centres. These will be just the heritage models, so old Range Rovers, series vehicles and maybe some discoveries, things, who knows, but there'll be more on the way about that. What the plan is, is that you'll be able to go down to these Land Rover experience centres and drive about these old vehicles, which I think sounds like pretty good fun. If you think we've missed anything in the news or you have something that's coming up that you'd like to tell the world about, do let us know. We'll put some links on the screen for that and we'll look forward to hearing from you. Now, recently we heard about a Discovery 2 that was undergoing a rather massive restoration. Sounded a bit odd because Discovery 2s don't often get the full polished treatment. However, this one was, so we headed over to Black Country 4 before to see what that was all about. <laughs> Well, we've got here a customer came in with a tired Disco 2 that he wanted completely stripping down and a complete nut and bolt restoration and build up. Um, and, and, and here it is. Land Rover launched the Discovery 2 in 1998, and though it looked very similar to its predecessor, every body panel, bar the back door, was different. There were claimed 720 other changes throughout the vehicle also. Under BMW's control, the new Discovery used the TD5 engine, which was a progression of the Rover L-Series car engine. All in all, it was a pretty solid vehicle and performed well in the G4 and other events during its time. Well, the Discovery 2s are, are a nice vehicle. Yes, they've got the problems, mainly with the chassis rotting, which is why he wanted the galvanised chassis. But, um, you know, this, this has been completely rebuilt. The engine completely rebuilt. It's, uh, it's literally like a brand new Discovery. Um, he loves the vehicle. He's also planning on doing a lot of overland trips. So uh, our job really was to build it, um, you know, as if it's come out of Land Rover, but better. We have a lot better quality parts and um, a few touches here and there to make it a better vehicle. Well, for a start, it's been galvanised. I mean, these chassis suffer. They're well known for suffering, especially on the back end of rot and corrosion. So this chassis has been galvanised and had a been painted in a special paint as well. So this, this chassis will last forever. It's, it's never going to rot or rust. It's never going to have that problem, ever. So the chassis going back galvanised. Next stage was to make sure he's got enough protection and the right equipment to do what he wants to do off-road. So we start at the back. We've got a south down fuel tank protector here, which also has a detachable tow ball on it. Next up, uh, we've put a fuel filter protector on, which is actually originally off a TD5. The good thing about this is that it protects the water sensor at the bottom, which can get damaged when off-roading. So a nice little tip for anybody with a Disco 2 off-roads, Defender TD5 
fuel filter protector. Now moving down to the front, we've got the competition winch bumper from Devon 4x4, housing, full competition, good winch. So we've got the galvanised chassis, we've got that protected. The next stage is running gear and suspension. We're doing the suspension, what we've done is use top quality suspension components to assure for, for lasting and durability for when he does his overland trips. You can get cheaper suspension kits, but for this we, 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 we wanted to use a particularly you know, good quality one. I mean, if, you're over, if you are off-roading, uh, especially overland trips abroad, it, it is worth spending that extra money on, on quality suspension components. Don't go for the cheaper option. Definitely spend the money and get the, the better components. Gearbox, totally standard. The only thing we changed was changed from the old drum handbrake to a disc handbrake. Very good bit of kit for off-roading. You don't have the weight of the drum flying around on the back. Um, it doesn't get clogged up with mud and water, and you've always got a good, you know, you always got a good handbrake. With the engine, again, no expense spared. The engine's been completely stripped down, completely rebuilt using all genuine parts, piston, crank flywheel all lightened and balanced running a hybrid turbo and the result of all of that will be a TD5 engine developing well over 200 brake horsepower which is which is pretty good very powerful engine an exhaust is a high performance full stainless steel system a lot bigger than standard which is a nice touch with it coming out as a side exit exhaust rather than coming straight out at the back as they do on a standard discovery and of course, being stainless steel, the exhaust will last, last a lifetime. You'll, you'll never need to replace it unless it's damaged. And that's not all. We've also run ARB diff lockers and BF Goodrich mud terrain tyres to assure maximum performance when the going gets tough off-road. So that's all done. Chassis is all built and now it's ready for its shell, which is at the paint shop, which is where we're going to head over now to see how they're getting on with that. Okay then, here we are at the body shop, dropping the chassis off for the shell to be put on the chassis and then painted. The, sh the shell's already been prepped, the engine bay's been painted and it's been stone guarding underneath. So now it'll go back on the chassis, into paint, and we'll be back in about 3-4 days to pick it up, ready to take it back for final trim. And we'll be bringing you more from that Discovery rebuild in part 2 over the next couple of weeks. If he carries on the way it is so far, that'll be a lovely vehicle all said and done. Now, a few weeks ago we showed you the Land Rovers Live Owners Club and we asked you guys to send in and get in touch with us if you've got some interesting vehicles or stories and you wanted to be part of that. Darren Lewis did, and here's what he had to say. I'm Darren Lewis and this is my 1983 Range Rover Ambulance. Darren's Range Rover has taken him overlanding across much of the planet. After travelling here, there and everywhere, Darren has learned a thing or two about how to be successful on and off the road. When this ambulance was retired from medical duties, Darren got his hands on the vehicle and has optimised it since to suit his needs. Let's see what Darren's learned. Yeah, yeah, so the first thing to change was the V8. Uh, as lovely as it is, it's not practical for a, for a long trip because you need to carry such a lot of fuel, it's really expensive, and I didn't fancy sleeping on top of 100 litres of petrol. So that was the first thing to change. Um, the suspension was upgraded as well um, with uh, Old Man Emu springs because it's really important to have really strong suspension. Um, if you're spending thousands of miles on corrugated roads it really takes it out and uh, the other modifications really there was a small modification made to the back there wasn't a great deal of ground clearance at the back um, so I had to kind of chop away at the the back departure angle a little bit just to give a little bit extra and make a big solid bumper 
it didn't have a bumper, it was a fiberglass rear body. And uh, I thought it was probably quite useful to have something solid behind. And it worked a few times, you know, so. Um, and then the interior was the next biggest modification. So on the interior, it was originally an ambulance, obviously, and it would have had a, it had a big gurney stretcher here and a big solid steel bench here for the nurses to sit on or the doctors to sit on. Lots of medical equipment. Some of the, it's mostly original, a lot of the pieces still remain. So it's got the big old uh, fluorescent tubes in here and vents and things. And this was originally a, a cupboard for all the medical supplies. Um, but uh, it had to be changed for the trip. We needed lots of storage. We needed uh, fridge, cooker, sink and, uh, and a proper bed, not a stretcher. Again, a big, a big problem when you're, you're traveling overland is that you tend to get a, a lot of dust and, you know, muck inside the car. So it's nice to have places which are locked up uh, where you can keep things nice and clean and dry. Um, we built, uh, it's got a, a built-in Engel fridge. So a nice 40 litre fridge there for the beer and milk. I've got a, a sink which is, again, it's nice if you're hot and dusty, we can come and we can just uh, turn a little tap on there. We've got running water, which was uh, always welcome. And a little gas cooker there with a couple of hobs and uh, a grill underneath so we could have pizza, which was quite a nice treat now and again. Little cupboard up here for the toiletries. And over here is where we normally keep things like the kettle and cups and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, very much, um, once you're in here, it's home from home, you know, we've got everything we need. We've got, you know, make a cup of tea, make a sandwich, warm, clean, dry. And uh, when you're on a uh, stopover at, say, a border crossing somewhere and you've got to kill six hours or stay overnight, it's nice just to get in here. You can watch a film, have a cuppa, life's good. So you kind of learn very quickly what you really don't want and then you can kind of pick up what you do. But we know that, you know, certain things like a fridge is invaluable. You need a fridge. Um, it's really nice to have um, some running water, some clean water, because you get dusty and dirty very, very quickly. And just from some of the trips that we'd done before, we learned what was unpleasant. And what was unpleasant was um, being in a cramped small place, being very hot, very dusty, very dirty, and not being able to find anything. After a great look inside and a load of helpful advice on preparing your vehicle for overlanding there by Darren, so welcome to the Land Rovers Live Owners Club, and if you'd like to be featured, do get in touch with us. You can get in touch with us on Facebook and or Twitter. We'll put the links on the screen. And that's it for this part, we'll see you in part two. Have a look over the Defender Challenge. From the original designers and manufacturers of the iconic Defender panoramic windows, Maasai 4x4 have been creating products for your adventures for over six decades. Now with five different types of glass, with fixed and sliding windows, tinted or mirrored, and introducing our new Zeppelin windows and a full in-house installation service. Maasai have reinvented Land Rover styling. For all your Land Rover adventure upgrades, go to Maasai4x4.com or visit our Litchfield showroom. So welcome back to Land Rover's Live. Last week we headed off into the Peak District to have a look at a very different kind of Defender. Well this is a 2015 Defender. It's not much different to one last year or the year before, or even 20 years before that. They do make some changes along the way, like more, well, uneconomical engines, bulges on the bonnet and things, but Land Rovers on the whole are known for a few things, robustness and sometimes reliability. However, we've come down to the south of the Peak District to a little company called Bowler Motorsport. They've done something altogether different with the Defender. This is the Defender Challenge specifically for 2015. If you didn't hear of it last year, you will have this year. What Bowler do is they've put together a full rally series of six events throughout the country where they'll be taking these things, well, in a full-blown rally. This isn't a standard Defender, so don't be fooled by its general aesthetics. 
a little closer look and you can start to see where it does get uh, a bit of the motorsport name from. Now Bowler are not new at this game, they've been doing this for quite some years. You might remember back to the Bowler Wildcat, it was an all out possessed Land Rover looking type of thing. They still do those rally raid vehicles in the form of the EXR, EXR and EXS. But this, for the most part, is a stock Defender that's just been slightly tweaked. Bowler have kindly given me some specs that I can talk about on here, but the first thing to notice is underneath the hood, it's now 170 horsepower. For a little bit more, you can go to 185 horsepower, and it's got bags of torque. So all of a sudden, we're getting performance in 0-60 figures, which will impress most. Furthermore, you can notice immediately from the front, the bumper's a bit different. They've thrown the original one away and put this lightweight aluminium one on. It's also got lifted edges for a bit more clearance. Many of us may have seen these in the magazines and such. It does just look like a spruced up Defender. But when you really get close, there's a lot that's been done here. Take, for example, under here. There's a roll cage inside this, and not a normal roll cage where somebody's drilled some holes through the tub and welded it to the chassis. This has got a whole new section of chassis, which you can't see from there, but it's really robust. As well as that, they've got uprated suspension, uprated brakes, and really is now a sports car as far removed from a farmer's toy as you could imagine. And the enhancements don't stop underneath. They've also got interior as well. There's not much room for your arms in a Defender, but Bowler have sorted that out in this rally car. They've got their new door cards in there, which apparently gives you a bit more elbow room. Well, anything's better than nothing. As well as that, the thing that stands out the most is this beastie roll cage. I mentioned earlier that it goes straight through the back with the extra chassis mounts. It's no different inside. It is enormous. They've also put on some of the usual bowler extras that you might have seen elsewhere, such as the gear lever. And it's a funny looking creation, but the reason behind it is that the weight distribution of an original gear knob with the ball on the top and just a stick below means that when you're going that fast and bumping about so much, the weight of the gear knob can actually throw the vehicle out of gear. Bowler have changed that with improved weight distribution on this rather peculiar looking gear lever. It's got everything else you'd expect to see from a full FIA or MSA approved rally car in there as well. And you'll be able to see these things tearing up and down with the other rally cars all through the summer. So without further ado, let's take a look at what happened at the very first stage of the 2015 Defender Challenge in Minehead. The Defender Challenge is a essentially a one-mate race series to give people the experience and expertise to develop into big races like the Dakar and the Africa race. The, the Defender is a great vehicle for racing because of a number of factors. Its robustness is the first thing, simplicity, and once we've played with them, yeah, the speed is quite good. You'd be surprised. Yeah, there's a lot. It's all about torque, really. When you're racing in the desert, especially, but even on these stages in the UK, it's all about in-gear acceleration and it's robustness and reliability. Prior to the uh, the, the, the single day venues, we will. Uh, like we actually speak to pattern and pace notes, get our own pace notes sent over, and then we just go straight off of them. Um, so we've never driven the, the routes, the tracks before. Yeah, I don't think we were, we were certainly weren't last in the 4x4s or the, the car category. Um, it's about keeping the cars tidy. The tyres are, uh, are obviously designed for mud, sand, etc. So they're not going to give us much adhesion on the, uh, on the tarmac stage. But certainly for a lot of the new drivers, it's good we all drive on tarmac, we know the braking points, power points, turn points, so uh, I haven't seen any of the times yet, I haven't looked. I wanted to get back into racing, I had Caterham raced for a few years ago and then family ki little ki kids came along and uh, decided want to, wanted to get back into racing so looked for a class that looked like it was going to be a mixture of competition, fun, something that we could actually compete in 
Uh, I didn't really want to race against 20 year olds who were going on to try and get driving careers and things like that. So this just seemed like a really great mix of um, social competition and yeah, just fun. Well, this is absolutely our first time and it's not just both our first time doing it together, it's first time doing it even individually. Brian's got some track experience and I've got some uh, sprint experience from a number of years ago, but um, this, this, this is completely new to us, really. It's uh, brilliant. It's the first time I've uh, driven this one with the bigger turbo and the bigger brakes. It took a bit of getting used to this morning. But no, Defender, above and beyond, adapt and overcome. We've just done stage seven, we're now in for the lunchtime, uh, the hour stop uh, for service and then we're out for five more stages this afternoon. It's been a really good morning, really slippy, um, almost too dry. Um, some of the stages are absolutely fantastic but just the length of them is a little bit short. I'd like them to be a lot longer. Um, the eight miler we've just done was fantastic, absolutely brilliant. But no, camaraderie is good. Spectators, it's really nice to see quite a number of spectators out there on the stages. And the sun's here for the marshals, which uh, makes a big difference. Yeah, full range of emotions from like, that was all right through to abject terror and a bit of hilarity as well. So, you know, and chaos. So, yeah, everything in uh, half a day. Uh, it seems like a lot longer than half a day so far, but really enjoying it. Well, we're lying in fifth at the minute, seven seconds behind the guy in fourth. Um, you know, we are we, we, we are on the edge just to make the numbers up. So we want to be competitive. So to finish fourth, that would be great. Um, up, maintain fifth, definitely finish fourth. Be a very happy guy, man. Yeah, we can uh, we can keep the car uh, quite tidy. I haven't seen any of the two-wheel drive cars, so I don't know how quick they're going round. But no, as long as we keep it tidy on the entry, we can we can drive round the bend, the Kumo tyres, the Bilstein suspension. The car is so rigid with what Bowler have done to it, um, it does become part of you, so you can start to eke out and push that little bit more. Um, I don't think many people expect to see a Defender backing sideways into a, a long hairpin bend like that, and it's, I would imagine it's quite entertaining to watch. And a very well done to reigning champion Ed Cobley, who once again in 2015 came out on top. The Defender Challenge continues all the way throughout the year until the end of November. If you do get chance or the opportunity, do go along and have a look. The Defenders play a small part in a field of about 170 cars, so there's generally something for everybody there, and it's a great day out. That's pretty well all we've got time for on this show. But if you think we've missed something or you've got some great stories or products or anything you'd like us to take a look at and you think other people would be interested in, do get in touch with us. You can do it by the usual means on Facebook and or Twitter. We'll put the links on the screen for those. All that remains is to say thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Yeah.